would like to welcome everyone here to this special Zoom conversation with uh, the amazing Ukrainian artist Andrei Strakov, who is joining us today from his home in Boyarka, Ukraine, which is just southwest of Kyiv. Andre, it is such a great pleasure to have you join us here. Uh, translating for him from her home in Warsaw is Olena. Olena, thank you so much. And uh, and then also joining us is our great friend Giovanni Giusti, Giusti uh, who is the founder uh, and head curator behind Gallery X in Dublin, Ireland. And the exhibit that we're doing here at the Philosophical Research Society in Los Feliz is a co-presentation between PRS and Gallery X exhibiting Andre's amazing surreal collage works. And my name is Dennis Bartok. I'm the executive director for the Philosophical Research Society in Los Angeles. Welcome, Andre. Are, are you um, are you uh, uh, happy and surprised that your your work is being displayed here, thousands of miles away and in, in Los Angeles? Андрей, скажи, что ты радий, здивований, що твої роботи зараз показуються тисячі кілометрів від тебе в Лос-Анджелесі? Так, це дуже важлива і велика подія в моєму житті. Я все ще не можу, не можу так в повній мірі зрозуміти, що це для мене дуже значима виставка і, ну, Я дуже радий і немає слів, щоб виразити, наскільки я вражений цим. I'm, I'm very happy uh, with this exhibition and I uh, even can't find uh, words to say how I'm impressed with it. So I'm now thinking about it and try to realize uh, this event. Uh, я, я хотів би е, поблагодарити е, Джованні Гюсті, е, Дениса Бартака, Келі Кармена. I want to thank to uh, to say thank you to Giovanni, uh, also to Dennis uh, and to um, Андрій. Yeah. Uh, і to всіх, uh, всіх організаторів моєї виставки. Uh, and to um, all other organizers of my exhibition. Giovanni, how did you discover Andre's work and and meet him and and when did you first exhibit his work at Gallery X in Dublin? Uh well, uh I, I encountered his work uh, during my trawls of the internet for amazing art that I have been doing now for, for many years, even before I started the gallery. And I was already a big fan of his aesthetic. And in 2016, um, I organized a little show uh, of erotic collage. So I'm a big fan of collage in general. I think collage is one of the great misunderstood and you know un, unsung uh, styles of uh, of visual arts um and uh, so i asked uh, andy to participate with some of his works and he did he sent some of them to to dublin and you know that was normal thing that happened and then uh, about a year ago when um ukraine was invaded and we all were, were very worried about what was going to happen. Uh, this message arrived to me out of the blue uh, from Andre asking me if he could send his work to Dublin for safekeeping, which I thought was really moving because, you know, from, from far away, we don't really understand how scary it must be to be in a place which is under attack. And also, we didn't know what was going to happen next. We didn't know how quickly everything would would evolve. 
So um, I said, of course, you know, bring it. I mean, it's it, it, it's it's amazing, and you know, we might even have an exhibition of it if that's okay. And that's how it started. That you know, then this wonderful package arrived from from uh, from Bayarca, you know, a few weeks later, and everything started from there. We had a wonderful exhibition in Dublin, which went really well. Which you know was really impressed a lot of. Of, of people and of local collectors. And then we thought we can't just now just let this wonderful art sit in the in the room. We just, you know, show it around. And that's when we started talking about it with um with Dennis and Kelly. So that's kind of, you know, we started off just simply me as a fan and and you know saying, please send me some works for this group show uh, at this point seven years ago. And now we have, you know, we have all this work uh, to to show to people. That's really wonderful. Um, although sadly, also coming from a difficult situation. I'm actually going to share some of this work as we talk. So, so Andre, even though we refer to your work as as collage there's a quote that that you're not a fan of the word collage and that you prefer the old world the old word application and and can you explain why you prefer to call them applications Андрій скажи будь ласка чому ти не любиш використовувати слово колаж а використовуєш таке достатньо старе слово аплікація для своїх робіт. Ну, тому що uh, дуже багато людей, художників використовують uh, колаж. І uh, я трохи хотів uh, відрізнятися uh, від uh, спільноти тих людей, які uh, цим терміном користуються. Ну і аплікація – це ще важливий такий момент. Чому аплікація слова? Це пов'язане з дитинством і з дитячими переживаннями, коли я в перший раз там ножницями в дитинстві вирізав бумагу. В дитинстві це називалося аплікація. І для мене це от як щось, ну, зв'язок з дитинством в цьому. So, he says that a lot of artists use about uh, um, uh, collage. So he wanted to um, to feel different from them. So uh, he decided to use uh, the word application. And the second point is that uh, uh, application is something uh, uh, that sounds uh, like apart from a childhood because he, when he was a small uh, boy, and as other children, uh, he did these applications in kindergarten at school. So it's um, that's why he uh, likes to use this word also. And it, and is it true that you started making these applications around 1991 or so, inspired by a stack of old Soviet? Newspapers was was that when you began making your applications? Andrei, чи це справді так, що ти почав робити ці аплікації ще в 91-му році, що ти використовував матеріали з радянських журналів? Так, так, так. Я використовував десь 92-й, 91-й рік початок з таких і це були абсурдні абсурдні з радянської преси абсурдні такі додаїстичні колажі з написами я можу продемонструвати, продемонструвати навіть ну зін а те що залишилось якщо це цікаво so I really started to do this collage applications around 1991-92 and I use um, uh, Soviet uh, uh, magazines and newspapers, and that time I also used uh, 
some quotations, some words, and I've made a zine. And if you wish, I even can show you it to you now. Uh, yes, of, of course. We would love to. Mm -hmm. To see. Mm -hmm. Uh, this uh, zin. Uh, so here is the zin. Uh, uh, that's wonderful. So that's a a zin that you did. Is that right? Uh, uh, zine, uh, tam, yeah, it's a zin that you did in the 90s, right? Yeah, it's a zin which Andrei made in the 90s. З українських газет радянських часів. He used Ukrainian newspapers uh, Soviet times. And uh, оригінали, ну, оригінали, ну, не в мене немає оригіналів, вони ще в 90-х кудись зникли, зникли в мене. I don't have original works, so they disappeared later, so I have only the zines. And what what source materials does he use now for the works, for example, in the Graces show, which I'll, I'll go back to. So what what kinds mm -hmm. of like, for example, in this figure we're looking at on the left against the brown background, which I love, in the blue dress with the the kind of skull head playing what appears to be like an intestine saxophone. What, where did those images come from? For the Що використовуєш? А, чому використовую? Ні, ні, що саме які журнали, газети, чого ти вирізаєш? Це старе, старе атласи, старе атласи 40-х років 20-го віку, старі медицинські і атласи патології, які я знаходив на блошинному ринку. Uh, в Києві флюмаркет Київ. Uh, uh, uh -huh. Мені подобається. Uh, я використовую їх, тому що мені подобається стара печать цих ілюстрацій і дуже приємна бумага, яку зараз не роблять. Мені подобається стара бумага і фактура і uh, качество ілюстрацій. Свойственно для того времени, с 40-х годов. So, Андрей uses old uh, medicine books, atlases from 40s, and uh, he likes uh, very much the texture of these um, illustrations, uh, the quality of paper, so it's very specific, so that's why he um, uses them. Giovanni, you're both a, a good friend of, of Andre's, and, and of course it's amazing that he entrusted you with his life's work during the, the terrible war, the invasion going on in Ukraine right now. But you're also a, a very experienced gallery owner and curator. Can you talk, what is it for you personally that, that appeals to you about Andre's work kind of in the the history of 20th or 21st century collage or or application work and in, in particular that the I want to say anthropomorphic but the 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 very human quality of these kind of surreal mythological and often demonic figures that we see in his creations these two and and we'll look at some more. Here's an here's another uh, this very psychedelic image. Can you talk about 
your personal reaction to his work? Well, uh, of course, I have you know my own uh, my own personal reaction <laughs> more than the um, you know uh, critical view that would you know make sense to an art historian. But uh, um, I see the the, the works that uh, Andre creates um, can subvert an anatomy, if you want, subvert the human form in many different ways. And by subverting it, they make it clear, they discuss it, and they make it beautiful. Um, so you, you, say, you use the word demonic, but actually I would think, I would say that his work is more godly in that it allows us to de delve deep into the reality of the body. Um, a lot of the illustrations that come from medical texts show us bodies that are not standard, bodies that are not healthy, maybe. Um, but they do that from a, a very loving, uh, I think, a very loving uh, perspective by making them beautiful, by showing them as a form of, of, of beauty, of, of nobility, they make them, um, they, they give us, they give it really a, a different role in our, in our minds. We, we, we don't feel repulsed by these bodies, even the ones that are most far away from our normal concept of perfection. We actually feel attracted and not in, obviously not in attracted in the sense, oh, they're attractive, but we feel drawn in uh to to their humanity and i think that's a very uh, beautiful beautiful um feelings to have towards towards our fellow humans that's that was that's my impression i mean that's why i've always loved his work so much uh it's just it's just like it, it, it's 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 revelatory it's like um an epiphany towards humanity which i have rarely seen elsewhere in art myself um yeah so <laughs> that's a, that's a wonderful description of i think what makes andre's work um so fascinating but also uh accessible there's a great quote here from andre in my work i turn to the theme of death and the world of infernal entities creating my own mythology and geography of personal hell. And I love that the, the, the two uh, phrases, infernal entities and personal, personal hell, because while there is something infernal about these figures, there's also something very quirky and likable. And so I wanted to ask Andre, are there, do you have any personal favorites? among the figures that you've created do you do you name them do they do they kind of speak to you as the artist once you've created them Андрій, чи тебе є якісь улюблені постаті з тих, що ти створив, чи ти якось називаєш їх, чи ти якось з ними комунікуєш? Ну, улюблених в мене, ну, вони всі різні, і е, я ну, до якогось одного образу не можу сказати, що я якось виділяю один образ. Е, ну, в мене вони всі, і я, мені дуже важко давати імена, і тому я не називаю ніяк більшість робот. Вони всі без назви. Ну. So uh, all these uh, creatures are different, and I can say that I have uh, a favorite one from them, and, and I don't give any names to them, and don't give names for my uh, works. So it's quite uh, difficult for me. So uh, these are a few images from the exhibit here in oh. Los Angeles of, of 
Andre's incredible artworks, which is going on. Um, if you don't live in Los Angeles, actually, we have a number of these online at uh, prs.org and, and you can purchase them online as well as, as in person if you live in the LA area. And um, several of these I know have already sold, but I think a number of them are are available. Uh, Andre, where I know you talked about uh, your work for, for zines or magazines, what are the opportunities you've had to display your work in the Ukraine? Are there, is there a gallery in, in Boyarka that specializes in esoteric art or in Kyiv? Andrei, ти згадував в Бразилі, розкажи, який у тебе був досвід експонування робіт в Україні, чи в Борці є якась галерея, чи в Києві, з якою ти співпрацюєш? Де показувалися? В Україні в Україні в мене було дуже небагато виставок, три Може, три виставки за сім років. І це були е, не персональні, колективні виставки. Одна була перша тільки в Павлов... Павловці, галерея персональна. Е, і мистецький арсенал – це такі колективна виставка, це більш воно офіційне. Ну, і Дуже-дуже мало було виставок, тому що це спіс... ну, мистецтво ну, не популярне. Но... Дивно, що музей придбав Хмельницького... Хмельницький образотворчий музей Хмельницька, українського міста Хмельницька, придбав роботу рік тому для експозиції. В основному я займаюся сам виставками, ну, такими локальними, чи в андеграунд-клубах був Кащей. Тобто локальні маленькі галереї вже не существуючі. In Ukraine, around three exhibitions during seven years. Uh, mostly there were group exhibitions, and one uh, personal exhibition took place in Pavlivka Gallery. It, uh, um, it's, this gallery was a little bit connect, uh, connected with Mental Hospital in Kiev, but it didn't belong to it, but connected with it. Uh, also, once um, and he was surprised that uh, his work um, uh, was bought by a uh, museum, like a uh, regional museum in Smolnitsky region. Uh, and also, and we had few like underground exhibitions in kind of under, underground pubs in Kiev, actually. Some of them even don't exist already. Um, oh, я хотів додати ще, забув mm -hmm. сказати. Теж дуже мене здивувало, що два роки тому вийшла книга Ukrainian Naive Art, як енциклопедія Naive Art, і там мої роботи в цій енциклопедії «Мистецтво наїву». 20-21 року, тобто сторіччя. Дуже здивувало, що там про мене стаття всі наїв арт, хоч це а, ну, не вважаю свої роботи наїв артом, але вони дивно опинили ці енциклопедії наїв арт в Україні. А як вони назвалися 20-го сторіччя, так? Наївне мистецтво 20-21-го? Книга точно, на точну назву я зараз не пам'ятаю, в мене її немає. А називалася на, зараз, щось там, український наїв, ну, точно 
Ну, наїв арт from Ukraine 20 mm-hmm. 21 так. Also, um, Andre's works were published uh, in an album called Ukrainian Naive Art of the 20th, 21st Century. There was also an article about his art, but um, for Andre, it's quite strange that he's, he was categorized as naive art. Mm. But still, uh... that's right. Я э, вышлю, как это выглядит. У меня не существует, нет, не сохранился экземпляр, но я надешлю через мессенджер э, Джованни и Денису фотографии этой книги. Андрей can send you later photographs of this book. In fact, he, uh, he doesn't have a book already, but uh, he can show you how it. Okay. So Giovanni, you, you have an exhibit going on right now at Gallery X in Dublin on the theme of childhood that includes some of Andre's work. Yeah. And in fact, there is an aspect in many of these works that seems to relate to the act of giving birth uh, in, in this uh, work, it, it seems to be kind of potentially vomiting out or giving birth to, uh, uh, you know, an assemblage or a creature. Uh, can you talk about the current exhibit and, and how you see Andre's work relating to the theme of childhood? Oh, well, um, a, a lot of the work uh, that we 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 showed of him it's uh it's not the 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 graces series is is kind of a, a subset of his work a lot of it is based on um soviet magazines that have um that actually show photos with you know children's faces and 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 uh and and children in general so obviously that was more direct connection uh, a more direct connection i think that's one of the things that gives very much power to uh, andre's work is the juxtaposition and i i know that's a very abused word but anyway the the the, the, the at the same time they have images of childhood which evoke they make us vulnerable when we look at them because we feel protective we feel you know, an, an endeared uh, uh, feeling, but at the same time, there's all this violence, but not the violence in the sense of, you know, of, of cruelty, but of, um, of of being able to get really deep into the the, the soul and the and the bodies of other people, and. Um, they, they are two very different feelings and two very different uh, uh, modes of looking at the people that it, it, it's very hard in general to have them both at the same time. And that what makes them very, very powerful. Um, the Andre often uses images of children, both from medical texts and from other sources. Um, and they're often children who suffer or children who are different or children who are maybe monstrous in some way um and that is is of course very painful but it's also very very powerful in uh in evoking in really waking up our our um, our feelings so and even because the art that i like to show is always art that is very emotionally engaging and 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 powerful that's that's what really is attractive um to me in his work. So so one of the the visual themes that uh that at least I see repeated in in Andre's work or certainly in the Graces series are these figures with wildly distended jaws you can see several here uh going back this figure as well 
and one of the books that that you drew on originally was entitled jaw fractures in peacetime and their treatment i believe what what is it about injuries to the jaw and the 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 human jaw and distended jaws that that uh fascinates you andre Андрей, ти зрозумів, так, що це питання про чому ти використовував серії про книгу і чому тебе надихає це там ці теж були такі зображення з щелепами. Я буду так, ну, щоб тобі було легше перекладати, може, такими краткими, не сразу блоком буду говорити, а буде краткими. Я не делал коллажа на протяжении многих лет, 20 лет вообще. Mm-hmm. Так, ну, перекладаю, может так. I didn't make, didn't make collages for 20 years, so I have had to kind of a break. И э, моя знакомая э, случайно нашла э, в подъезде выброшенную диссертацию вот, переломов челюстей в мирное время. Это Архив доктора Назаренко, так называемого, медицинский, 50-49, кажется, года. And uh, once my friend uh, found uh, an old book, uh, it was of 1949, it was um, scientific work, uh, medical scientific uh, work of uh, Dr. Моя знакомая подарила мне этот архив с фотографиями ран и ран и увечий, это называется в мирное время лечение челюстных. И я был настолько впечатлен, ну, и в то же время мне настолько одновременно я был впечатлен, мне нравились эти изображения, одновременно они отталкивали, были очень страшными, жуткими для меня. Я просто захотел сделать нечто страшное и меланхолическое в то же время. Поместить, оживить их и поместить в другой контекст, вне медицинского специального материала. Uh, so this uh, book had a lot of illustration of uh, different kind of injuries, and they were at the same time horrifying, but uh, also um, some kind of uh, like them, and there were at some kind of melancholy, and I decided to um, use them, but in the different context, not a medical one, to do something with them. So many of your works, at least the ones in this Graces series, the figures seem to be floating in a kind of nether world or or a kind of dark vacuum. You live in a very rural area of the Ukraine, and I know you lived in the Urals for a time. Does the landscape, the geography of where you live or, or lived in the Urals, has, does that influence your work in any way? Твои работы, они ніби знаходятся в такому, они ніби плавают в таком щельном средовище, часто в какие-то такие темряви. Ты сейчас живешь в городском Ну, в місті невеличкому перед цим ти жив на Уралі. Наскільки оточуючі краєвиди вплинули на тебе? Наскільки вони впливають на твої роботи? Ну, у мене ландшафти... На меня влияет, да, на меня, я получаю влияние от ландшафтов, как и Урала, 
которого я практически не помню. Он есть только как э, какое-то общее впечатление, смутный образ. И украинские ландшафты – это прежде всего лес, темный лес. Там. Ну, или страны, в которых я бывал до войны. Шотландия, там, скандинавские страны. То есть, хотя это не, не отображается никак на моих работах, но а, я, мне сложно сказать, каким образом а, ландшафт отображается, но это значимое для меня то есть впечатление от природы, прежде всего от природы. Импульс, да, я получаю импульс э, от природы, дикой природы, я люблю очень дикую природу, чем от э, реалии города. So, in fact, I almost don't remember uh, my living in Ural, but I still have something in my memory, like a kind of an image of it. Uh, uh, If to say about the place where I live now, I'm mostly influenced by forests, uh, dark forests, and also I was influenced uh, by landscapes I saw in in the countries I visited before the war. In I was in Scotland, in Scandinavian countries, uh, but um, I it's different to say how this landscape influenced my works, but they definitely influenced myself. Uh, uh, the some kind of impulse of wild nature, but also a little bit. Um, I think that city also influenced me somehow. City uh, landscape. Yeah, the dam show. Все, вся серия Грации сделана почти на одном фоне. И, и, если это черный цвет, то все это черный цвет связан с тем, чтобы видеть один образ. Это как сновидение. Они связаны с ночью и с образами сновидений. Чтобы в темноте выделяется только один важный образ. Almost uh, all uh, works from Graces, uh, they created just uh, on, on the uh, black uh, paper. So uh, it's just a little bit like a symbol of night, but also I wanted to, um, to make an accent of these images that there will be only these images and uh, nothing else uh, in this work. So, so viewers just can concentrate on them. Giovanni, can you share the, the reaction from the, the audience, people who have been exposed at your gallery in, um, in Dublin to Andre's work. And also, can you just tell us a little bit about the history of Gallery X? I know it's moved uh, to several different spaces above ground, below ground. And I, I I went to a couple of the different spaces, which were incredible for some of your shows when I was in Ireland. So I wonder if you could talk about that for a minute. Yeah, well, the, the uh, gallery has been kind of a, uh, uh, I've, has been open since 2014 so now it's in its ninth year although four of those years were uh i didn't actually have a space so i don't know if i can count them or not but anyway um the gallery is devoted to uh esoteric and surrealist and uh weird and wonderful art um and it is non-commercial in the sense that Although it isn't state sponsored, uh, or uh, but I mean it, it, and it does sell the work. It its its focus is not in making money. That's not the focus. The focus is to show art that just gives people strong reactions and and makes them fall in love. Um, the the everyone was completely blown away by the strength of Andre's work. Uh, I don't know who, who in the audience is familiar with, with Ireland. Ireland is all very 
people in Ireland are all very nice and they don't want to, you know, shock or upset other people. Everyone's very friendly and they, they're not exposed a lot to things that are strong because, you know, they like things to be nice and, <laughs> and easy. So uh, they were particularly blown away by Andrew's work because they were blown away by the strong emotional and almost physical reaction that they had uh, because obviously the beauty is there, the beauty is there, but also the realization, the, the ability to look inside bodies is is uh, is scary for everyone. So they they were really strongly strongly impressed by by this. Um, so I'm very happy that we had the chance to show them in in Ireland. And actually, I'm trying to get them shown somewhere else in the world because I think they really bring enlightenment where everywhere they go. That's my feeling about better, them. If you're if you're in Dublin, which I highly highly recommend, is one of the world's great urban centers. It's just an incredible city uh where where is gallery x located right now if you're in dublin uh gallery x is located on a small street called hume street which is just off stevens green stevens green is the the most famous park uh urban park in um, in dublin um so yeah it's in a little basement of course kind of a painted black of course dark <laughs> and with barely any uh, any natural light uh, coming in as is right and proper um but it's very you know, it's very central and so it's um and it's just around the corner from some other very important galleries well shall we say so, some very important galleries this is uh, mine isn't very important but yeah so um and it's a little space for all the misfits and weirdos who like you know, art that is unconventional and um, you know comes from the from the inside. So, Andre, you you titled this series of works "Graces." Can you talk about why you chose that that title? And were you aware when you were creating them that it was going to be a a cycle of of work? Uh, at the time? Andre, tell me why you gave this exhibition, this series name Grazie, and when you created these four works, do you understand that this will be a whole cycle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's like a случайно первую работу из серии Грации, которая 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 хранится в музее Хмельницка. И понял, что там были три странных фигуры: смерть и какие-то паукообразные существа в женских одеждах. Uh, first, I created uh, one work from this series. Actually, it, it was the work that I later sold to Khmelnytsky Museum, and there were three, uh, three okay, creatures uh, like uh, one with a like a symbol of death and uh, spider-like um, creatures. Мені сподобалось, що це кольорова, нова кольорова якась робота. Я побачив в цих це само прийшло образ Харіта, Сиграце, сочетання несочетаємого уродства в красоті, як три от этих вот греческих грацій. Я зрозумів, що я хочу зробити серію. І я спеціально не знав, яка буде наступна картина. Але серію я почав робити одразу ж, займався тільки цим два роки. So uh, I realized that I liked this work and um it uh, 
it uh, was colorful so um i liked to combine things that uh, are not suitable in fact and i rather that i want to make uh, more uh, works in this three and uh, i've created them on um, this works uh, during two years and also uh yeah i, I thought about this street and uh, I was inspired by this mythology by creating these uh, works. In particular, this work, I think, is fascinating because the figures are on this beautiful gold kind of moon-shaped background. I wonder, Andre, if you could talk about about the inspiration just for this walk us through the process for for this work in particular с двумя золотыми кругами с чем она что да ну чем можешь ты рассказать ты зразумею да самый крутую работу я посмотрел когда я посмотрел в то время когда еще не сделал этой картины фильм яванской или индонезийской мифологии. И фильм назывался Асванг. Асванг. И я сделал образ Асванга. Это вампир, индонезийский вампир. Я уже не помню сейчас его конкретно характер. Это образ конкретно э, индонезийского вампира мифологического. Я воссоздать попытался его в этой работе. It's in this work. Uh, I I should mention if we have questions from any of the uh, the people joining us on the Zoom, please put them into the chat, um, and we're going to open it up in a moment to uh, to questions. Giovanni, is there anything you would like to ask? Andre, of course, you're a great friend and champion of his work. But are there any questions that you've been dying to ask him? Oh, wow. <laughs> I would love to be able to see inside his mind, you know, and uh, see where all this, 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 this magic comes from. Uh, um, I have... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I would like to also know how much of your uh, inspiration comes from personal experiences, and how much follows the the images that you find. Uh, in the case of of all the different art forms that are created by assembling other images in a way that don't come out of 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 empty of an empty page, there's always the the question of the relationship with the source material. The the you know how much of the inspiration comes from what you see and how you see it recombining, and how much comes from things that are already in your head and then are realized in the in the process of 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 recomposition of images. That's something which. I I'm very curious about everyone that does um yeah photo montage or 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 or, or collage and um, some that's something I would like to know of you as well. Andrei, um no no, спочатку два не сказав, що йому взагалі було цікаво побувати в своїй голові і зрозуміти, як народжується цей дивовижний світ. Але питання є таке, наскільки натхнення ти за створення робіт береш свого персонального досвіду, а наскільки 
це більше пов'язано ну, з сам, самим процесом е, створення робіт, якби з тим матеріалом, з яким ти працюєш. Ну, це поєднання, поєднання двох факторів. Бажання зробити приблизно якийсь там, ну, образ, який я ну, приблизно собі ну, уявляю. І випадковість матеріалу, матеріалу, який ну, там, випадково мені потрапив там, в, той, в той момент, коли я робив. Тобто і випадковість, і приблизно я хочу створити щось. Таке, але випадковість дуже часто, випадковість те, що мені потрапляє, випадковий матеріал, це теж важливий, дуже важливий фактор, навіть більш, ніж ну, якась конкретна ідея. In fact, there are two sources of inspiration. Of course, um, I have some images, I have the idea of, um, of let's say, like, pictures I'd like to create, but of course it's even uh, even more important is uh, uh, the, this random material I use because it's um, something that is that was already created. So in, I think this influence is even bigger than the influence of my um, ideas. Thank you. Andre, are you um, working on any, any new applications, collage works at present? Can you tell us about your current work? Andre, are you working on anything or are you working on something new? I'm not working on visual work. Я дуже втомився і втомився від цієї роботи, там пов'язаної з колажем, і від образів своїх я теж втомився. І це для мене дуже важко, і нема бажання зараз робити взагалі. No, I don't create any visual works because I feel tired of this work. And also I feel tired uh, of these uh, images um, that I was creating. Yeah. Uh, now oh, yeah. I don't do uh, any new things. I have a lot of work on a new book about prose. And I made a presentation in my independent press, in the press, a presentation літературного ну, нашого клубу цієї книжки вона називається Явер 93. Це Now, I, now I worked on uh, creating uh, on a writing in fact a book it uh, called Javier 93 uh, and uh, recently um, made a presentation of it. Um... Uh. Это сборник рассказов, посвященный художественной обработке моих сновидений, избранных за два года. Это книжка. Я надеюсь, что Джованни получит эту посылку. Там небольшие проблемы с доставкой, я очень-очень переживаю. So this book, uh, book is about uh, my dreams. It's, um... Actually, a kind of uh, uh, literature interpretation of my dreams I had during the last two years. I've already sent it to Giovanni, this book, and I hope that uh, the book will reach you. Yeah, it's, it's still stuck in customs, unfortunately, but yeah. <laughs> hopefully. No, yeah, but we have a question from Tristan. I would love to know what are some of the ways to best support Andre's work and what are the other things in his life that keep him inspired to, to keep creating? 
Андрій, скажи, що тебе надихає? І які, як можливо, ну, як ти підтримуєш свою роботу? Ну, ти я... надихаєшся, як ти підтримуєш себе? Надихаюсь е, е, власним досвідом, ну, фантазія, е, власні якісь переживання, е, мої психотичні, невротичні якісь там стани, тривога, чи е, літературні, літературні істочники, художні літератури. Чесно відіння, це таке джерело натхнення. Такі. Ну і, власне, матеріал, сам, сам по собі матеріал, який випадково мені ну, попадає в руки. My own experience inspires me. Also, um, uh, my, let's say, some psychotic. Uh, neurotic sometimes feelings uh, and uh, also also some literature and the material uh, I have. I can also say that a great way to support Andre's work is uh, by purchasing it either through Gallery X in Dublin or here through through PRS in Los Angeles. We are um, uh, so thrilled and honored to be presenting this. I have to thank uh, uh, Kelly Carmina, who is our deputy executive director and also oversees our gallery exhibits, Michael Dorsey as well, on our end for all of their work coordinating, um, working with Andre and Giovanni and mounting the work in our gallery uh, where it's on exhibit right now in LA. And I think, um, Kelly actually just put a link uh, in the chat where people can purchase some of Andre's works either here from PRS or from Gallery X. Uh, and I cannot encourage people enough to sign up for the Gallery X uh, emails. Uh, every time I see a message uh, about a, a new show at Gallery X, uh, it makes me so envious and jealous. I wish I lived in Dublin instead of just being a, an occasional visitor. As Giovanni does, such, I, I have to say one of the most amazing galleries for esoteric and surreal art anywhere in the world is in, in Dublin, Ireland, that Giovanni is, has created over the past few years. Um, um, be before we wrap up, uh, Elena... I have to ask, how did you and Andre become friends? How do you know each other? Hmm. Very uh, long story. Um, actually, um, uh, many years ago, we started to study in Poland together, <laughs> culture science. <laughs> but then Andre quit it and I finished uh, the university here in Poland. But since then, I think we know each other since 2003, um, <laughs> for many years. <laughs> Do you have any of Andre's works yourself? Yeah, actually, you can see it even here. <laughs> that's, that's <this> one. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. I, I, I did notice it, and I thought, hmm, this must be one of his works. Yeah, I have another one, but different. <laughs> I, I have to say that that uh, as soon as the show opened, my wife and I purchased one of Andre's amazing applications. We're just waiting for it to end so that we can bring it into our family. Um, I would like to thank you so much, everyone here, uh, Giovanni at Gallery X for introducing us to Andre's work, championing it. Uh, Olena for your wonderful translation and especially most of all Andre to you for your incredible artistry and for allowing your children to come and and visit us here in Los Angeles and in Dublin uh, 
Thank you all so much. And everyone who has joined us here on the, the and, Zoom. And, and before we go, Dennis, I would like to thank you for, for uh, you know, allowing these 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 uh, our, our these works to cross the Atlantic and to just be exposed to a completely different audience and you know that hopefully will also come to to love them as much as I do. Well, uh, Andre, thank you so much. It's been so wonderful talking with you today. I know it's quite late at night for you there in Boyarca. Uh, in the forest. Uh, so uh, thank you again so much for joining us. Andrei, дуже тобі дякуємо за участь. Ми розуміємо, що там зараз у тебе вже пізно. Можете теж, ну, там щось хочеш сказати, попрощатись, то я перекладу. А так, я дуже радий і для мене це велика честь спів співпрацювати з Денісом Бартаком. І Джованні Юсті, ПРС і Галері X. І ви дуже допомогли мені з виставкою. Я навіть не можу представити, що коли-небудь таке стається збиття, як і в Галері X мої виставки, так і в ПРС. Це... Большая честь для меня и огромное вам спасибо so glad, за сотрудничество. Uh... Я очень рад, что мои работы понравились американским и ирландским посетителям моих выставок. Огромная благодарность. So I'm very glad and it's a big honor for me to have uh, uh, this exhibition. And I want to thank you so much, really, and for both of your institutions and for personally to you, Dennis and Giovanni. And before I even couldn't imagine that uh, something like this uh, will happen. Uh, will happen. And um, I like to remind that also um, visitors from um, Island and from states could to uh, see my work. So thank you so so much. Eleni, дуже дякую за велику допомогу за переклад. Thank you. Thank you very much. And and again, if you go to Dublin, Ireland, make Gallery X your first stop. It is for me. Whenever whenever I go to Ireland, immediately I. I want to go see Giovanni and his incredible gallery. So it's a, one of the great cultural treasures of Ireland and, and really of Europe. It's so wonderful there. So. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, Thank for you. joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.